top of the Spectrum News. Welcome to Top of the Spectrum News. I'm Jennifer Allen, the creator of Asperger's 101. And I'm Samuel Allen, Jennifer Allen's son. I have Asperger's syndrome and we're here to help. Yes, we are. And our topic today is Asperger's syndrome in college. And what are some of the tips or tricks that you can do to be able to keep somebody with Asperger's in college. It's really, really tough. This, I think the statistics are really staggering at 80% that uh, students with Asperger's syndrome or high functioning autism never make it to a higher level education, much less are able to stay in. It's a very, very few who do. So there has got to be some sort of uh, tricks out there to where you can stay through or at least some um, probably tricks isn't the right word but there's probably some good methods uh, to where you can and Sam is currently enrolled in a, a area college and uh, you have your goals of mm -hmm. staying through what what is what has kept you staying this long well one thing is that um, unlike high school which goes about it's on high school is kind of like a nine-to-five job it goes all day and it goes five days a week but with college, you know, you can choose your own pace, you can, um, you know, um, choose your own classes, you know, it's all up to you. And unlike high school, um, it's like one class can be like one day, one class can be another day, so you have plenty of time to finish homework for that one class. That's a good point. That's a good point, and you've done really well with that. However, if you're if you're looking at attending a university um, away from home, well, we have uh, the most wonderful expert with us today, Dr. Mark Ellison with Marshall University, it joins us, and he has created a successful program there. And welcome to the program, Mark. We are so glad you're here, and we look forward to your insights. Tell us about your program there at Marshall, real quick. Well, thank you for the invitation. I'm happy to be here. And uh, our, our program is called the College Program for Students with Autism Spectrum Disorders, and it's housed at Marshall University and sponsored by the West Virginia Autism Training Center, which is a statewide uh, uh, program for supporting individuals with autism and their families. Uh, our program supports 53 full-time uh, students this semester. And in the course of the 12 years that it's existed, has has uh, supported well uh, well into the hundred of uh, of students. Um, we have a, a, a focus on academic, social, and independent living uh, uh, skill uh, development, and uh, we have a pretty good success rate. We're pretty happy with with how we're doing. You must be because the fact that you can take them there, and it's not just the academic work can't believe you know, you're touching on uh, the very things that uh, often are a detriment like the social skills and um, so you are you're tackling those head on what are some of you know what are some of the means that we could all learn from that you do there at Marshall that could help ensure success at college well I think there are some things to prepare for ahead of time uh, and if I would lump those into uh, the you know the pre-transition and the post-transition you know before you go to college uh, you really need some practical on-campus experience and that can be as simple as taking tours of universities it can be or, or community colleges or it can be as complicated as, as getting involved in a in a program for instance we have a high school program at Marshall University where rising seniors the summer before their course can come and uh, uh, their senior year can come and take a, a course in college and live in the dorms that kind of practical experience is invaluable I think once you come to college in that post transition piece um, you, uh, you really need I think to be su successful uh, some and I like the idea of you said tricks sometimes there are gimmicky things that can be helpful for instance um, visual charts are are wonderful. Uh, any kind of visual kind of uh, a chart or or, uh, or tip can be helpful. Charts, calendars, checklists, and a lot of technology that uh, students use today, which I'm not very good at, uh, but they're good at, uh, like using smartphone alarms and those things can be helpful. And I know in our program, uh, the uh, professionals who interact with students use those kinds of things on a daily basis. Those are fabulous. I know, you know, I hadn't even thought about that, but um, I know Sam, you you use your smartphone a lot. Oh yes, I do. You do. It's like uh, reminders and uh, keep yeah. keep everything together. Yeah, and I also uh, use a uh, <clears throat> a uh, 
if I'm wanting to like set up uh, reminders for like when homework is due, I don't really use the calendar on my smartphone. I actually tend to prefer a, uh, you know, an actual planner with, you know, made of paper, obviously. Okay. Um, you know, I can just write down when my homework is due on, you know, what day, and then I can find out, you know, when I could do my homework, and, you know, it's everything's very organized, and that's just how I like it. It kind of helps you keep everything on track, which you do have that excellent follow through. And I guess, Mark, that's a that's another thing to look at is that um, it's probably individualized, right? Probably every one of your students, you know, needs something a little different. It, it is individualized for sure in terms of how the strategies are carried out. But I, I, I would have to say, uh, though, that there are a couple of things that I think are universal. Uh, number one, and ab, you know, for, first and foremost, is uh, the create being being involved in the community and feeling safe and comfortable in that community. Uh, in higher ed, that's that's a significant issue going right now. They want people to feel part of the community so that they'll stay longer. But with students with Asperger syndrome, I think it's even more vital to uh, to really help those you know, uh, those relationships build. Um, our program spends a significant amount of time helping uh, uh, students get involved in building peer relationships, building relationships with students. Um, it's, it's, it's a significant part of what we're doing. You know, it's a must. You have to find somebody that, whether it's a, a service there on a campus uh, that they can go to, uh, one friend, just somebody that they can go to, I think would make all the difference between success and dropout. Absolutely. Is there anything else that you can leave us with? Because unfortunately, we're out of time for this segment. It's such an important topic. But when someone is considering, and you had gone over the uh, things to do prior to going to college and the things that you can do during college, but to keep it going all the way through the other side, it doesn't always have to be just in four years. Oftentimes, like I think Sam's plan is going to be a five or six year plan. But whatever it takes, is there a suggestion that you can give us another one, just one more tidbit uh, when considering going to college with Asperger's to, to make it last? Well, um, I, think that, I think my suggestions probably be a controversial one, so I'm going to say, say it this way. Uh, give cons considerable thought to the topic of disclosure. Uh, I think that the disclosure, and from my perspective at our university, is a positive thing. But I know that that creates a significant amount of stress for folks. It's a real challenge, and often people don't disclose until after perhaps they should have, and there's, a, there's an issue at hand. I think it's something to be thinking about early, before you arrive, and how you're going to do it has to be well planned out, but it's something to really be considering before you need to consider. That's a strong, strong nugget for us. Thank you so much, Dr. Ellison, for joining us. Always enlightening. And of course, you can always uh, are able to uh, read what Dr. Ellison has to say um, on Asperger 101 as he takes care of the college blog. And it's always inspirational. And, you know, one of the things that Dr. Ellison had said, I think, really, really hits home. He was talking about, you know, disclosure and, um, you, Sam, did this without, I didn't even know you had done this till after your, I think it was your first semester, you went to all your professors and told them right off the bat, didn't you? Yeah, and even if I didn't tell them, I uh, emailed them <clears throat> my, uh, you know, I did an email. I told them that, um, you know, I have Asperger's and, you know, even showed them the website, Asperger's101.com. But just to let them know what it is and what it entails, did any of them not know what Asperger's was or what autism? Did they know? Well, actually, some of them uh, actually knew what it was. Okay. Okay. Well, you know what? That's a great idea. I think, you know, that decision worked for you, and you took that, and really, he did that on his own. I had nothing at all to do with that, but it worked successfully for you. And so, you know, that's something to discuss at home. Uh, disclosure, I think that was a great element that Dr. Ellison left with us. And we thank you for joining us for this other session of Top of the Spectrum News.